Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about color grading. Now, color grading may seem kind of boring, but it's used all the time. You see it in movies, you see it in imagery, and so it really can make a big effect on your images. And so I wanted to talk through a couple different ways you can do it, some really phenomenal ways you could do it in Comfy, and I think it's going to really help both up your game around imagery and media creation, but it also will give you an opportunity to teach others around color grading and, and how to do it uh, in Comfy. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Susie, who is the developer of many of the notes that I'm going to be featuring today. She is a total whiz. And when we talk about the Comfy Roll nodes, that is all her. And so she gets all the credit for that. Um, speaking of which, I want to show you uh, as we get into this exercise, I created this really cool two by four grid and you can see these are the images we're going to be talking about today actually into the workflow uh, but you can see uh, the ability to create these really easily and this kind of follows the line of the the comic strip video that i had earlier uh, but you basically can set up different images and then put them into kind of rows and columns and it can easily show you uh, combined images together so Let's get started, and I'm, obviously if I scroll way out here, you can see I have lots of different things, but instead of scrolling, as we learned in the last video, I'm gonna use bookmarks. So I am going to start with zero here, and we're gonna start with our everything everywhere uh, setup here with loading. Uh, basically have all the typical things that you'll need. We're not gonna do any sort of in painting or face detail, etc., cetera, uh, for this video. Uh, but I always have it set up there just in case I want to be able to enable it quickly. One big shout out to uh, Freak, who did the model for this uh, video. Uh, Bifrost is really awesome. You'll be able to find it on Tensor. Uh, I will have that linked. All right, let's go to our first example here. Um, now, there's actually two different ways you could do color grading. Uh, most of the time in the industry when you're doing videos, movies, etc., even imagery, um, you do what they call post-processing, meaning you create the image first in its entirety, and then you apply almost like a color cell over the top of it. That's actually how they used to do it a long time ago. They would just shine light through a cellophane color to give you that sort of feel. Um, now it's obviously all digital, but you can see uh, this is one way to do it. Now there are pros and cons to doing it this way. Um, the nice thing is you've fully created your image and you're basically, you can make little tweaks and adjustments to what color you want to use, as well as the level of intensity, as well as uh, all that good stuff. And that's great, right? There's no harm in doing it this way, um, especially I've done a few different pictures this way, and it's been really uh, kind of gives you a good feel, a good kind of color vibe, depending on the atmosphere and the environment of the shot you want to do. In this case, I did a mermaid shot, and I wanted to kind of give a bit more of that kind of underwater sort of blue uh, hued to the image. And so what I did was I did the normal sort of render uh, with my prompt, and then I brought it into this uh, color tint. And color tint, this is one of the comfy roll nodes, right? And just as a reminder, you can go into manager and install, and then actually type comfy roll, uh, you'll have it uh, there. I actually installed mine directly from Git, so that's probably why it's not showing there. Um, but you actually can then choose which color. Um, you can choose a, a bunch of different kind of block colors, or you can go custom, and you can choose your kind of hex color. Uh, just for those that have not done this before, if you say Huey hex, um, it will bring you to a nice palette where you can choose whichever color you want to kind of start with. Uh, and then it kind of gives you a whole bunch of options. You can just click on the one, and you can see each shade of the color gives you that hex and it'll copy it to your, your clipboard for use. Um, so I basically pasted it there. Um, and then you can adjust the strength, right? How heavy do you want that color, etc. What I find often is it will actually darken your entire picture a little too much uh, by applying that color. And so uh, I also can then loop that into an image level adjustment where you can adjust the, the black mid and, and white levels of that image, which can really boost up that brightness so you get the color, you get the brightness, and it's exactly where you want it. So really cool. But again, this is post-processing. So this is after you render your image, it then applies the color. For the rest of the examples, we're going to go to number two. Uh, these are colors that are infused 
into the creation of the image. And this is a really powerful tool. Obviously, you could even do post-processing color after this. Uh, but I love this from the standpoint of it helps to kind of infuse whatever sort of scene you're trying to create. It uses that color or colors to kind of infuse into the scene. And you can get really complex with it, which we'll get into a couple of cool, uh, really cool examples. Uh, so the first one, we're going to start very basic. And we're just going to use a single color, right? I wanted this kind of dark, almost like blood red sort of color. I wanted to create almost like a creepy uh, graveyard scene. And so, you know, created my normal prompt, as you can see here, you know, close up gravestone, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I'm doing a latent uh, consistency model. So I'm, I'm setting up my LCM just to do very quick renders. But you could see uh, the key piece of this. Now, uh, here's another comfy roll custom node. This is called color panel. This is choosing one color and creating an image from it. So I'm choosing my maroon color and I just have a little preview there to show you what it is, but I'm using this and I'm feeding this into my VAE encoder. So I'm almost like coloring the entire palette that I'm gonna diffuse images from into whatever color or colors I want. So in this case, it's just solid block red. So I'm going into here with my solid block red and saying, with this red palette, create this scene. And so you can see it really creates this really beautiful sort of eerie, uh, grave scene uh, with bats, etc. So this is now going to get a little more complex. We're not doing a single color, but we're actually going to do either gradients or radial gradients to really show how you can sort of infuse the environment to match whatever scene you're trying to create. So in this case, I'm using again another comfy roll uh, custom node. This is a, a gradient, a radial gradient. So it's going to create circles of color. And you can see I started with yellow, ended with blue. Obviously, any of these, you can do your block colors or your hex custom color value. Uh, and you can also adjust the distance and the radial. So basically how big the circles are going to get, big and small. Um, and by doing so, that's again being fed into the VA encoder. So here's my palette with my yellow and my blue. It's going into my sampler, and my sample is this close-up shot of a detective, etc. I want to have this kind of almost like cinematic sort of feel. In fact, I'm using part of this Mile High Styler, um, which Triple-Headed Monkey created a long time ago. Really fantastic. You can have a whole bunch of different styles. In this case, I want to do cinematic. And you can see by itself, it's actually a really not bad shot, right? It kind of has that kind of, you know, kind of gritty sort of feel. But you can see the matching of the color between the yellows and the blues is awesome. It even shows on the reflections of skin and, and you know, objects within your scene. Uh, this is great. I added a few Loras here, just so you know. Um, I find it helps a lot, um, especially as we're dealing with human subjects in scenes. A few of them I like. I like this 3D MM. deals a lot with skin. Uh, perfect eyes, especially when you have close-up shots with people. Uh, perfect eyes is really great to give you that high detail and face as well helps with skin tone and, and makes it kind of not so plasticky um, but this by itself is great but I want to actually take it a little further I want to really clarify give a crisp sort of feel and so I piped this output into the ultimate uh, upscaler and this upscaler you can see I have an upscale model I'm typically using ESR GAN uh, which you can uh, get off the hugging face pages um, but this ultimate uh, upscaler really helps kind of bring up the detail. Uh, I'm upscaling by 25%, but then I'm doing a trick, right? Because when you upscale, sometimes it'll create big pictures with uh, additional sort of twin subjects in it, right? And that's not really what I want. I want this sort of feel, but I want it really crisp and clean. So this really cool shrink uh, sort of node that is uh, newer, uh, it's called patch model and downscale. And you basically feed your upscale into this, and it then kind of refines in a very kind of crisp way and brings it down. And you can see here's the end output, and it's just really a much crisper shot. You can see it has some nice lens flaring going on, um, which uh, is really a cool scene. But either picture is really great um, to, to go through. All right. Our final example is kind of the, the more, most complex of the ones we were doing. Um, basically, we are taking a gradient. So this time we're starting with our sear color gradient. So this is just a normal sort of rectangle gradient. 
and um, started with orange. I ended with like kind of a dark, almost like hunter green. And on top of that, we're using our canvas, right? Our drawing canvas that we've done in a few of the recent videos. So feel free to check out some of the past videos. And uh, I basically drew kind of almost like a silhouette of, it almost looks like an ant. Again, I'm a terrible drawer, uh, but I want it to be a deer uh, in the forest. So uh, I get a little bit of credit there. Uh, not much, I know. And so, um, but if you look at the prompt itself, right, we're having a deer with large antlers facing away. Obviously, in this case, it's not facing away because of the way I drew it. Uh, but if I drew it slightly differently, it probably would. Um, through the trees, sunbeams, etc. And you could see I brought the denoise down to 0.65, right? The lower you bring that denoise, similar to the other videos, the closer to this kind of sketch you're going to get. So if you want that really deep green and really deep orange, you can bring that denoise, denoise down a little bit more. But if you go too far, you'll see as you render it, it will basically look like your sketch, right? It won't look like actually a deer or whatever your subject you want. Um, at the same time, if you increase this denoise level, you know, to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, even to one, at that point, you're giving instruction to the AI to just do whatever, right? And so you're kind of almost losing completely, not only your sketch, but also the gradient coloring, which you're trying to get. But again, this is a very, very powerful tool to be able to get, you know, sort of that cinematic sort of feel that, you know, really colorful feel that rich vividness of your end media that you're trying to create. Uh, the lures here are not so useful. Uh, I do have them enabled, but you can, you don't necessarily need them. Uh, and this workflow is going to be linked uh, in the video as well. Hope this was helpful. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to find me on Discord. And otherwise, have a great day.